Okay, guys, so I'm sorry, but something happened with my recording last night, and whenever I uploaded it, it uploaded without sound. So I'm going to have to redo this really quickly. Uh, and if you hear kids coming in in the background, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. So this is uh, a very important for you to understand. This next unit is really three units combined uh, into one because they're very, very small units. And, and more importantly, they're all going on at the same time. So unit six, unit seven, and unit eight are all three different things that we're going to study that are all happening at the same time. Um, so today we're going to talk about industrialization and urbanization. Urbanization is just the growth of cities. Industrialism is the growth of manufacturing within our, our country. So this is going to be the manufacturing and economic growth of our nation. The Industrial Revolution, it was started by the War of 1812. Remember, we are fighting the British, and the British were our sole uh, supporters where we bought our manufactured weapons, manufactured goods. Now, if we're fighting somebody in war, are they really going to sell weapons to us? Probably not. That's what really opened our eyes, made us realize we had to start manufacturing goods on our own. So innovations is just another way to say inventions. Uh, the only difference is that an innovation doesn't necessarily have to be tangible. So if I say I invented a light bulb, I have a light bulb to show for it. Um, but an innovation is just a different way of doing things. So, for example, there's a factory system, but before the factory system, we had what was called a cottage industry. Mainly women would participate in this type of economy. Um, they would create t-shirts from start to finish in their own homes uh, by themselves. So they would take the cotton ball, they would spin it into thread, they would turn it into cloth, and then they would finally cut it and sew it into a shirt. So it was just one woman doing this, and it would take a while. The factory system, however, would... Uh, move the production of goods from the home to the factory and it made production faster easier and cheaper one thing you really have to remember is that time is money when it comes to this unit and really in life so the faster something's produced the faster something's shipped the easier and the cheaper it's going to be for a final product the cotton gin was created by Eli Whitney now he created this to try to help slaves um, but it ended up having the opposite effect. So when he talked to a bunch of slaves, they said the hardest part about being a slave, other than being mistreated, obviously, is going to be picking the cotton seeds from the cotton. So he created this invention that would separate the cotton from the seeds, and all they had to do was push a, put the cotton in and push a crank. This was designed to help slaves. Unfortunately, it made slavery more profitable, which expanded slavery in the South further. Uh, it made people want more slaves. So interchangeable parts. Before interchangeable parts, everything was mended together. Every single machine or weapon that you bought, it was mended together into one object. Now, created by Eli Whitney, now each of these parts are going to be separated. Um, so that way, if one of them malfunctions, you can just replace the part instead of replacing the whole machine. So imagine if you got, you have a $30,000 car, you get into a wreck, and that bender, that fender is now completely ruined. That's a, you know, $400 fender that you could replace instead of replacing a $30,000 car. This made owning machines more affordable so the everyday person could afford them. A steam engine and boat. So this pressure from the, imagine you're cooking pasta. Um, and you have the lid over it. Your mom has the lid over it. And then all of a sudden you start hearing the lid shake and bubble. And that's from the pressure of the steam. It's trying to escape that pot. This is the same concept. You have paddles on top of the steam and the paddles will move. And when those paddles move, it creates paddles in the water. This is the first time long distance travel up river was possible. So now instead of having to go all the way back and, around, back and around the river, you can just go right back up the river. Now again, if it makes it faster, it's gonna make it cheaper. So it made the shipping faster and it made shipping a lot cheaper. And it was invented by Robert Fulton. All right, the telegraph now. This is the first form of wired communication. We have cell phones because of this invention. It made communication faster. It was invented by Samuel Morse, and it, the Morse code was used to translate. So this little button that you see this guy's pushing off to the left, or off to the right, 
um, he would push in Morse code dots and dashes. He would hold down for a dash and just press it for a dot, and it would create the letters that you see underneath. The canal. So canals are very interesting, but specifically the Erie Canal you need to know. One thing I need you to put in your notes is that the Erie Canal um, caused a boom in the Northeast and the Great Lakes region because the economy was so good because of this. So the Erie Canal was dangerously built by the Irish. They were practically slaves. They were very, very poorly paid. Um, and they were treated very, very poorly. And it was obviously dangerous because they're having to use dynamite to blow up this big canal. It's an artificial waterway between two sources of water, specifically one that's higher or lower. So as you can see in the video, a boat would come into a canal, the water would lower, the gates would open, he would go into the next one and it would continuously lower him or raise the boat whichever way they need to go. This is going to make shipping faster and easier. Lao Mills. Now this is the first time women are going to have jobs outside of the home. They're going to be very, very poorly treated and they're going to be very, very poorly paid. One thing you need to know about this under in this time period is nationalism. Um, we kind of talked about that with Jackson. But if you're not a white American man, meaning you are not a white American born in America, uh, raised American, you're going to be treated poorly, you're going to be poorly paid. The Irish are an example of that. We'll talk about the Chinese later that are poorly paid, and then obviously slaves and Native Americans that we've talked about before. Um, they're going to be very, very poorly treated. Which innovation or invention do you think is the most important to American history? And give reasons why. And that's it.